This video from Chad is on the hypothetical planet Theia, which, in the giant impact hypothesis, formed the moon when it collided with the young Earth. It is currently the favoured hypothesis for the formation of the moon, though it is not without its problems. Wikipedia lists six issues, though one is dubious. 1. The origin of lunar volatile chemicals. 2. The lack of evidence for any magma ocean on Earth, which such an impact would have caused due to the tremendous amount of energy released. 3. The iron content of the moon is different to the Earth's mantle, which would seem to rule that out as the source of most lunar material. 4. If most of the material had come from Theia, it follows that the moon should be rich in siderophilic elements, which are dense transitional metals that tend to bond with iron, however it is deficient in these elements. 5. Water in lunar basalt is more problematic if the impact causes massive heating. 6. Lunar oxygen isotope ratios are pretty much the same as Earth, whereas Theia would probably have had a different isotopic content to Earth, as was ejected from the collision. This is the dubious one, as I'll mention later. This hypothesis was not made without reasoning, and it is not favoured by scientists lightly. Edward Bell Bruno and J. Richard Gott III, in their 2005 paper Where Did the Moon Come From?, published in Astronomical Journal, outlined some of the evidence in support of this hypothesis. 1. Lack of large iron core in the moon. 2. Low density of the moon, which follows from 1. 3. Identical oxygen isotopic ratios for Earth and moon. Oddly, this is mentioned earlier as an issue, however, to quote Bell Bruno and Gott, the Earth and the giant impactor came from the same radius in the solar nebula. Meteorites originating from the parent bodies of Mars and Vesta from different neighbourhoods in the solar nebula have different oxygen isotope abundances. The impact of theory is able to explain the otherwise paradoxical similarity between the oxygen isotope abundance in the Earth combined with the difference in iron. This is perhaps its most persuasive point. For the good wiki can do, when it states it's an issue with a hypothesis when the scientific paper says it's actually a persuasive piece of evidence for said hypothesis, I'm more likely to side with the paper. 4. It explains why most planets do not have a large moon in relative terms. The event would have been rare. The paper suggests that the impactor, Theia, formed at one of the two Lagrangian points, which are also known as Trojan points, L4 and L5. Then gravitational perturbations slowly pushed it out of this orbit and into a horseshoe orbit, then, to quote the paper, onto a creeping chaotic trajectory with an appreciable probability of having a near parabolic collision with the Earth. Chad repeats the above issues from Wikipedia, nearly word for word but backwards in order. This section of his video will be omitted. Scientists know that there are issues with the hypothesis and are working on solving them or finding a better hypothesis. Like I said in a previous video, we don't know is not an excuse to throw our hands into the air, claim it to be unsolvable and invoke a deity. Anyway, enough of my jibber jabber, let's get back to Chad. And um, I hope you like this video because the next time you hear an atheist bring up this ridiculous hypothesis, you will have some answers ready and you will have some reasonable responses ready on deck that you can let him know that he's ridiculous and he's insane. Yes, the scientists who study this for a living are ridiculous and insane. So, here we go. <clears throat> I like how this one starts. We all know that atheists are crazy. They have dead hearts. And they believe in wildly ridiculous magical fairy tales by trying to disguise their intentional ignorance with their favorite line, It's just a hypothesis. What? Atheism equals insanity. Yep, of course, just keep saying that, religious fundamentalist, because that will make it come true, right? If my heart were dead, I'd be dead. So that's obviously not the case. And we're not the ones who believe in fairy tales, we reject your fairy tales. And what have hypotheses got to do with this? Things such as some, something coming, excuse me, something coming from nothing. Complete necessity based on Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This happens all the time and is one of the founding principles of quantum mechanics. A biogenesis which is a field containing many hypotheses that are being tested in labs around the world. One of the more famous hypotheses is the one proposed by Dr. Jack Sozak, in which self-replicating proteins are trapped within vesicles of fatty acids. And improbabilities so minuscule, they defy any rational thought process. I'm being facetious here, but this is an amusing mistake. If probability is px, then improbability is p not x, and if p not x is minuscule, then px is approximately 1. Even when faced with an obvious question, they think to themselves, I hate God so much, somehow nature just must have done it. 
Scientists don't really care about your deity, and the supernatural is outside the bounds of science. And since there is no tangible evidence for the existence of any deity or the supernatural, then we are forced to conclude that, until further evidence is provided, the natural world is all there is. This is the fairy tale hypothesis of the gaps argument, and I'll be making a separate video touching on this laughable tactic later. Hooray! I'm prepared for the lols. Beyond the many obvious fairy tales these god deniers are willing to accept, there is something far more important to these wackos that they themselves may not even realize. Something so important, I believe atheists should have statues of these things in their homes. Something so essential that they should have written a religious text on it. Something so powerful that they should bow down and pray to it every night before they go to bed. So what is this thing? This thing is the great, mythical, titan planet, planet Thea. Ah! If Thea didn't exist, neither would these atheists. Matter of fact, human life would not exist at all. Supposedly planet Thea, after the Earth was already formed, smashed into our planet. And the result of this impact created our moon. This is what is known as the giant impact hypothesis. So why is planet Thea so important? Yes, pray tell, because I'm sort of studying this spacey stuff, and I don't hold it in such high regard. Oh, and Chad, it should be past tense, dear. Thea no longer exists. Well, let me ask you a few questions to get to the bottom of this. We all know how bad it would be if an asteroid hit the Earth. But the impact of an actual planet smashing into the Earth clearly would have had major effects. So let me ask you, was the size, tilt, angular momentum, rotation, and axis of the Earth perfectly set for human life before or after the impact of Thea? It was neither. Humans adapted to the environment, not the other way around. If this world has two degrees of extra axial tilt, then our predecessors would have adapted to any climactic effect that would have followed. There's no guarantee that we would have been humans as we know it, or even if sentient life like us would have evolved. But that's neither here nor there, and is why this sort of fine-tuning argument that Chad's about to make falls flat. It's inconsequential to us. If this planet had become uninhabitable because of some event, then would we have evolved to sit around and take note of this? No! It's stupid to think such a thing. For brevity, I shall dub this sort of argument from Fierce the fine-tuning fallacy. It couldn't have been before, because when Thea supposedly hit, the Earth would have been dramatically altered. So what that means is that the impact of Thea basically fine-tuned this planet for human life. So all hail, planet Thea. More random, lucky, incomprehensible probabilities that these wacko god-deniers are willing to accept. As before, fine-tuning is a load of bollocks, and I'll reiterate, life adapts to the conditions that it is exposed to. There weren't humans before Thea impacted, sitting around thinking, good grief, this planet is terrible, we can hardly survive at all. Then, bam, they somehow magically survived the impact and went, oh, that's much better. This whole line of reasoning is amazingly inane.